go. Okay, good morning from Iceland. Maya said that some of you were wondering about how this camper van works. Front seats are pretty roomy like a normal car. Most things around here are a manual, so hopefully you're used to driving a stick. But in the back, there's plenty of room when you're driving during the day to put all your backpacks, your gear, your luggage. Uh, if you want to stop and it's raining, there's a nice little setup here with a fold down table. It is best to put your luggage in the front seat if you're going to do that. So typically what we would do, whether we're stopping to eat or stopping for the night, is we would put backpacks and everything on the floor, the luggage in the front seat. And it creates enough room with blankets, pillows, and sleeping bags that you can have everything. Obviously your heads are going to be here and your feet will go underneath this platform. If you're going to cook, the Cuckoo Campers did a nice job. They've got totes that pull out. So we would make noodles. I cooked burgers or you know some stuff in the saucepan or frying pan. But a little camper stove, just light that. And Do they give you the propane? They do not give you the propane. So you should buy some. But they have it at the but yes, campers. You can buy it from the camper van, please. And how many pieces of luggage do you think could fit up front here? Two. We've seen some people do three, but I would say one each, and then a backpack each would be fine. In the back. And really, these curtains are more for privacy in the summer months because with the midnight sun, it is bright out all the time. Uh, we've got two sleeping bags, two pillows, two blankets. That and we was... used a promo code to get those for free, so yep. we didn't bring them. One of the days I pulled this out and I cooked from here, because um, Maya was already laying down. But I had uh, all the stuff that you need to cook right in here. They give you two bowls, two plates, two cups, spatula, large spoon, a whisk, a can opener, sharp knife, and then two forks, two spoons, two knives, and a dish towel. And they give you a lighter, right? They do give you a lighter, yes, so from the propane, you are all set there. They have kind of a Ikea bag, large plastic bag that you can take your dishes if you want. They even give you a Frisbee if you're wanting to play, but they do provide you with dish soap, a scrub brush, broom and dustpan. So most of the places have a decent spot for washing your dishes. One of the nights, um, the place only had cold water, so we had to kind of wait until the next night. We could have easily boiled water and washed them that way, but it was just easier to wait. We brought wipes. We bought plenty of water, um, toilet paper, which we really didn't even need, uh, paper towel that came in handy just from eating. But then we had a few leftovers here. We've got kind of a Icelandic ramen noodle, raisins, apples, granola bars. We did hit the store. Um, I think Maya mentioned in one of her blog posts that eating out here is very expensive. So we did the best we could to kind of minimize eating out to once a day. I don't even think we did that. But and then a cooler, so we put ice in there. Gas stations do not have ice, so it's best to stock up at a grocery store when you find one. And there are not that many around so if you're driving like i think one day we literally just had cold water in the cooler but other than that everything worked out pretty well um, we did see some people with a slightly larger van while it may be nice from the room perspective driving around here it's super windy in a lot of spots and then trying to park and i wouldn't have wanted a bigger van from the wind perspective going through some of the mountains that we did and uh trying to park it so do you want to talk about your windshield wipers? Oh, yeah. So it'd be best to check, you know, when you're doing the rental car or overview. You know, you're checking tires, you're checking for dents and scratches and anything broken and stone chips. But I didn't check the wipers, and one day when we needed them, half of my driver's side wiper was falling off. So. And did it rain every day here? No, but almost. At so night, at night it was, was sprinkled. So, you know, luckily night driving, it wasn't a big deal because it's kind of the summer months so it's light all the time but I was gonna switch the passenger and the driver's side uh, windshield wipers around but they're different sizes so that wouldn't have worked because the other one would have stuck off the side of the car so just that'd be good to check when you're doing your rental car review and what about the charger uh, bring your own US or yeah you can bring a USB charger or a cigarette lighter charger because the one that they gave us has so a that orange light. one doesn't work 
but it, and the one in the radio charges your phone at about a percent every half hour <laughs> and, and not if you're all using <laughs> uh, navigation it will obviously not charge it it won't keep up so and not all campgrounds have places for you to charge your phone or your computer I would say the only other thing is just be prepared ahead of time to kind of know your way in and out of the city. Yesterday we struggled to kind of find a spot with Wi-Fi and, and some charging places. So maybe um, before you come, kind of look around Reykjavik and figure out places that you want to start out in and maybe stop back in. So. And what does the side of our van say? Don't stink and drive. So most places had enough showers. So. There are some that you had to pay for, but for the most part, they all had hot water in the showers and the were good enough. And we're at a campground right now, and that building is the showers, and around the corner there, you can kind of see somebody standing there. They're washing their dishes right there. And then everybody sleeps over there. So would you rent a camper van again? Yeah, I think what we would definitely do is have it picked up at the airport so you could easily drop off because what we're going to have to do today is probably put our luggage in a locker at the bus terminal, walk around the city for the day, and then go back and get our luggage and then take it to the airport on one of the bigger buses. But I think it would, I mean, most of the campgrounds we went to, I would say, were an average of $30 a night. So by the time you add up the camper van and seven nights of 30 bucks, you know, it may be easier to rent a car and you know, I've seen some Suburbans around here, so maybe you could rent something like that and bring your own sleeping bags and the extra luggage. It might be a wash, just do your math on it. But the fact that they had all the utensils and everything to cook in and kind of the luggage racks and everything back here made it pretty handy. So it would have to be a pretty compelling price change for me to not rent a camera. And what about camera. gas? Gas is expensive here. You think it's cheap, but it's like 226 a liter. So that's probably between three and four times more expensive than what we're used to back home. So most people, you know, obviously conserve fuel, but since we drove about 1,200 miles, I mean, it adds up, so. How many times do you think we stopped for gas? For gas? Five, four? Yeah, four times, I think. We probably filled up four times. So, and then you've got to fill it up when we bring it back. But, yeah. So yeah, I mean, we easily spent probably two to 250 on gas petrol 95 octane and then there is this nice curtain here too so at night when you're sleeping you just pull it across and that keeps the sun out as well um, and as you can see there's no windows back here so yeah that's our camper van that's our camper van thank you